Hey everybody. So I had a request just a few days ago about going deeper into the UVing tools within Pixies Studio. So that's what I intend to do today. And I think an important thing to cover first is what is Pixie Studio good at and what is it not good at? Um, I say all of this from the perspective of a Pixie Studio user. Uh, I am not working on the product myself, so I do not have all of the uh, intricate details of its uh, internal workings. Um, but from how I generally use this software is that it is built for the 99% of the models that I need to pull through. Um, frankly, it's the 100% for me, but I understand how some users, there is that 1% that needs something a bit more finessed. Um, when I say that, I mean anything that's requiring a UV unwrap based on edge loop selection, based on vertex selection. Um, some of the tools that are built into something like Autodesk Maya that I've been in for 15 plus years, um, those are going to handle much more bespoke use cases. Whereas Pixie Studio is built to be that stalwart, that workhorse that will power through a bulk of your models that will operate in a similar capacity. So I don't want to mislead anyone up front trying to say that this software is built to do per edge loop selection UV unwrapping. Um, but let's dive into it and see what we can do quite well. So first thing I want to do is just do a raw import. We'll grab our handy dandy radial engine. And there are a few different ways to UV unwrap in this software. The first one is if I select this and I come down into tessellate, You'll notice that underneath these advanced options that I already had open, since I use this feature sometimes, you have all of your common tessellation uh, requirements that you can illustrate here. But underneath advanced, you have, do you want to create a UV? If so, what type of UV do you want to create? What UV channel do you want that to live on? What type of padding do you want between your UV islands? So do you want X amount of pixels between each of those islands? And you have some more advanced settings down in here as well. But these are the bulk of what you'll see for UV unwrapping at the tessellation phase. Because I want to show you some of the later tools uh, and how this works in a workflow where you've received the item and the UV is not on it and you want to just do a UV unwrap, I'm going to hit no UV for now and go ahead and execute so that we get tessellated geometry. So I'm going to turn off outlines so that we can see this nice and clear. And from here we have a few options. We have in our UV menu, we have generate UVs by projection, which is more or less generating UVs using a projection on the axis aligned bounding box, the AABB, which we'll talk about in just a minute here. You also have generate UV by unwrapping which is meant to generate a UV by automatically cutting and unwrapping your mesh. Um, so that's how uh, many of you would think of like an auto unwrap that's leveraging just some intelligence to lay out wherever the edge loops break. Then you have repack UV, which automatically packs all your UV islands into the zero to one UV space. You have normalize, which automatically scales UVs to the zero to one space. You have resizing UV to texture size, which will uh, resize the UVs existing on a mesh so that they can be used to display a texture with specific size in the real world. Um, give a texture target size in millimeters and UVs are automatically resized. Uh, it's particularly useful when UVs have been automatically generated uh, previous to the software. Then you have something like swap UV channel. So that will invert your UVs from one UV channel to another when multiple UV channels exist on a selected part. Remove UV will clean up the UVs from a selected channel on the selected part and remove them. Copy UV will copy UVs from one UV channel to another when multiple UV channels exist. Your UV projection tool, which will essentially just activate the tool that I'm going to show you in the UI in just a moment. And then the UV viewer, which pulls up your very standard UV viewer so that you can see laid out flat what your UVs will do. For those of you that have kind of stumbled into this video and are not sure what a UV map is, I'll spend 15 seconds on this and then we'll continue. The idea is that a UV map is what 
what you have when you flatten out a 3D model onto a flat plane so that you can then texture it and then wrap that back up into 3D. So the common example that people will see is the large T cut out of paper. You lay that flat on a desk, but if you start to fold up the squares that make the T, you start to end up with something that looks similar to a cube. The T is the UV unwrapped map um, that lays flat, and that's just so that you can paint on the, on the model. So these are all the options that we have. What I will use 99% of the time is this UV projection tool over here in tools. So we'll open up the UV projection tool here. And I like to use this one the most because it's visual. I'm in Pixie Studio because I'm a visual learner. I enjoy seeing all of this stuff as I'm working through it. Um, immediately you have controls to change the projection and what direction you want it coming from, what shape you want it to be generated from. We'll leave ours as a box, which makes sense for this model. It's relatively boxy. You can change out the length, width, and height, as well as a few other settings in here, which channel you want a UV unwrap to. I'm just gonna leave it all as basic and hit apply to selection. But before I do that, I just wanna show you in the UV viewer, that we have no UVs on this. So as soon as I hit apply, after I exit back out of the viewer, we can then pull up our viewer and see some of the worst UVs you could have possibly made. And that is to be expected. So this is step one out of two or three steps that I tend to do inside of Pixie Studio. So we've done our projection, projected UV. Now I want to normalize all of that so that it all normalizes between the zero and one space in the UVs. And then the last thing is I want to repack so that it's going to intelligently lay these things out and maintain the padding offset between my UV islands inside of that zero to one space. And it'll give me something that I'll be quite happy with. So this is going to run for about two more seconds. And now that it's finished, I'm going to go to UVs, UV viewer. And I can see what is typically referred to as a garbage map, an auto map, uh, whatever you want to call it. The idea is that this is typically good enough to get into Substance Painter, start painting and start to understand how you want your textures laid out from here. Um, so this is generally what I expect to see inside of Pixie Studio. I'm not doing a ton of manual unwrapping um, in any sense inside of this software. I'm really relying on the software to intelligently handle how it wants to unwrap this for me. So the UV has been created. Um, you can also get to the UV projection up here, but you don't have the visual tool to then come in and indicate if you wanna be using local AABB that we discussed earlier or global. And the idea is if I have a cube and it's rotated 45 degrees on one axis, if I use local AABB, the projection rotates with it so that it will unwrap horizontally across if the horizon has been shifted 45 degrees on the model. If you use global, then it will unwrap 45 degrees across as a horizon, if that makes sense. Um, so that's the idea here. There are a lot of different ways to do similar things. I'll close this out because the UVs are already generated. And typically from here, you're just gonna do a file export. So one more tool that I do wanna highlight while we're in here is within your repack and normalize, you have the option to enable or disable share map. So if you're going to have one texture that applies to this entire part product, um, then you really want to keep all of this together on one shared map. If however, you have three relatively distinct parts to this, and you want each one to have its own 2K map, whatever it might be, you can uncheck share map. And when you hit execute, it's now going to repack this and have it so that the UVs are not shared. Meaning now that it's UV unwrap this, when we go to the viewer, it's going to look like utter chaos. But when you select one item in here, uh, let's select something kind of large. Maybe this, that's a pretty good one. Um, I can then come up into the UV viewer and I can see that this one item has its own map. Um, so what I would do is probably consolidate items into groups, and then I would unwrap them as groups if I wanted to have multiple textures on here. 
but there are ways to come in here and customize all of this more so than I've done in this video. Hopefully that's helpful to illustrate some of the UV capabilities in here. Anytime that you have an object UV'd, you can always turn on this checker here so that you can see a bit more of the UVs visualized right there in front of you. And this is generally as far as I need to take UVs for the bulk of what I do in my day-to-day -day life. Let me know if you have more specific questions you want us to dive into. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. See you guys in the next one.